Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're going to make a fun little bicycle card using some images from Art Impressions. So let's go ahead and get started. So for images today, I'm going to be using that cute little bicycle and also that sentiment there as well. And you get all these cute little items on here. I love that bicycle with the couple on it. And this is called the Enjoy the Ride stamp set from Art Impressions. For paper, I'm using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. And for ink, I'm using the VersaFine Onyx Black Ink, which is a permanent black ink. I've placed my paper in my Mini Misty stamp positioner. I'm going to go ahead and stamp this a couple of times just to make sure I get a nice dark image. So I did stamp that again, and now I'm going to go ahead and heat set that with my heat tool. For coloring, I'm using the peach pink and the light pink. These are the Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens, and these are a water-based pen, and I'm using my blender pen to do the blending here, and this is also the Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens. So this has just the right amount of fluid in it, I find, to do some easy blending here. And these Zig pens are really fine detail tips, so it's easy to get into these small little areas. And I did stamp on the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock because I find that the best paper to do my blending with the Zigs. You could try some other papers and see what you think, but I always keep coming back to the Strathmore. Um, it just has a nice smooth finish on it and it seems to blend really easily. So this card was inspired by the current New Year's Resolution blog challenge that Art Impressions is having. So I thought the sentiment, life is short, enjoy the ride, would be a good reminder just to enjoy all the little special moments in life. And even in the midst of the chaos and <laughs> confusion that we've had over the last year or so, I thought it would be a good reminder just to stay focused on the positive until we kind of get through all of this. Now I did switch colors here. I switched to bright yellow and pale yellow to do my flowers. I put a little of the pale yellow on first, then the bright yellow, and I'm just blending those out a little bit. And I should mention that all of the products I'm using in today's video are listed below and also on my blog. And to clean your blender pen, you just want to scribble it on the scrap paper until it goes clear, and then you can change to the next color. And now I'm going to grab the light green, and I'm just going to fill in some of those areas with the greenery on the little basket here. And I decided to finish out the bike with the rest of the pink. I was going to do this little section in a different color, but I decided I would just do the whole bike in the pink color. Kind of keeping the darker shadows down towards the bottom there. Now with turquoise green and light blue, I'm going to do the ribbon on this basket. And I'm going to use those same colors to do this little package here. So the color palette here is primarily that kind of ice blue color and the turquoise blue and then yellow and pink. So I'm kind of staying in those colors. I'm trying to just stay within that color palette. I find that if I limit the number of colors that I choose, it's it's definitely more pleasing to the eye. But what's fun about an image like this is you can totally change this by changing out the colors here. Now I'm using light gray and dark gray here to color in the little bicycle seat. Then I'm just going to blend that out. But if you did this bicycle in a bright red or orange, I mean, it would be totally different. That would be fun, actually. 
I like to use my images over and over again, and I like to think of different ways of using them, but sometimes just by changing the color, you can totally change the way it looks. This image also would be great to make note cards for a friend. If you just stamped a bunch of these just directly on your note card and then colored them in in all different colors and put some different sentiments down at the bottom, maybe make like a half dozen of them and put some envelopes with those, this would make a great gift. So if you're kind of looking for some little gift items, this would be fun to do. I've done this before and people seem to love it because you're always looking for thank you note cards and just plain simple note cards. So I think that would make a great gift for a coworker or a friend. And now with black and light gray, I'm gonna do the tires on this bike. I forgot to color in that little section of the bow there, so I'm just gonna finish that off quickly. And then I'm gonna work on the tires. I'm gonna lay down that light gray first, and then just add the black to each side. And again, with the black, a little goes a long way, so just use a very light hand here. And just blend those two together. With light blue and pale yellow, I'm going to color in that little bird. And I already added a little touch of the light pink to his cheek there. And I'm coming in with the turquoise green just to add a little bit more of a shadow. Just finishing off the handles on the bicycle there with the gray. And then with my mono sand eraser from Tombow, any little areas where your ink might have gone over, just grab this sand eraser and it'll remove any of that excess ink. It's really easy to do. Now I'm using the Uniball white gel pen, the Signo white gel pen, and I'm adding some highlights. I added a few polka dots to that one little package and then some little dots of white in the centers of each of the flowers. So now I'm going to grab that largest die and the fourth largest die. I've got some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock and these are the rounded rectangle A2 double stitch dies. These are also from Art Impressions. So I'm just going to center my bicycle on this. And I'm going to tape this down with a little bit of purple tape. I'm going to go ahead and place that on a little bit of an angle. I'm adding some scrap paper over the top of that because all my coloring is done and I don't want anything to get dirty here. And then again, place your larger rectangle on an angle. It just makes it a lot easier to run that through. Now keeping this die out, I'm gonna actually place this right back in the die here and I'm taping it down on the back side with a little bit of purple tape. I don't want it to move around. We're gonna be inking the front of this. So I'm basically using this as a bit of a stencil here. I'm using my Nuvo Hybrid ink pad in the Polar Ice to do some blending around the edges. And my sponge dauber as well. So again, I'm going to be using that die as a little stencil here. And I'm going to be coming in right over the top of the die and just rubbing some ink all the way around the edges. And then when I remove the die, that's going to leave a nice white border all the way around, which is a really quick and easy way to add a layer to your stamping here without adding the extra paper. It just gives you the look of another layer. Now these hybrid inks are a permanent waterproof, smudge proof type of ink, but it does work well for blending as well. Now you do want to make sure you clean off your dye really well so that when you go to use it again, it doesn't uh, transfer any of that ink. So I used a baby wipe, a wet one, and now I'm just using a dry little towel here just to wipe it off before I put it away. Now that that's all set, I'm going back to this little ink pad and I'm going to tip it kind of on its side here a little bit. I want to have lift one end of it and I'm just going to pull down from the top all the way down this paper here that we die cut earlier 
and I'm going to create the look of wood grain. So I'm just kind of scraping it along the top of the paper. And that's going to give us a really pretty wood grain effect. Then I'm going to go back over this just around the edges to create a little bit of a shadow here and finish off the edges. So I'm just using that sponge dauber and going all the way around. And you can see that there. Now I'm taking some white gesso. I'm going to place some on my glass media mat. I'm spritzing it with a little bit of water from my Distress Sprayer. And I'm going to use this fan brush here to do my spattering. And that's going to give us a nice white speckled effect on the cardstock. So you do want to heat set that when you're done. Now I'm going back to that sentiment, life is short, enjoy the ride. I'm going to stamp that kind of down towards the bottom section of this panel. I'm going to center it. And I'm going to go ahead and ink that up again with the Versifying Onyx Black ink. And I'll stamp that one more time. Now I want to add a little bit of Baker's Twine here. So I'm using the We Are Memory Keepers. This is the uh, So Easy Fancy Floss, it's called. And the color here is called Blue Lagoon. Now, I'm not sure that this is still available. I've had this in my stash for quite some time, but I will list it down below. But any Baker's Twine here would work really well. So I'm just trying to see how much I need here. So now I'm going to wrap this around a few times. And then I'll tie a bow off to the right hand side here. And I'm just positioning that right above the sentiment. Our little bicycle is going to go up at the top there. So I'm using my We Are Memory Keepers reverse tweezers just to clamp that in place, just to hold that while I do while I tie this little bow. So now I have a standard A2 size top folding card which measures four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm going to pop this up using some scotch foam mounting tape. And I am going to cut this into some little smaller chunks here and I'm putting some on either side of that baker's twine just so the card sits nice and flat here. So I've added all those little pieces of foam mounting tape and I'm going to go ahead and attach that to my card just centering it on the card. Now for the bicycle, I wanted to pop that up even more. And I have these foam mounting uh, circles. These are from Kaiser Scrapbook. And these are super thick. So I'll show you here. They're really thick and they're really sturdy. So I'm going to grab a few of these circles and put those on the back of my bicycle here. And I thought this would just add a lot of dimension to the card. So I'm pulling the backings off of those and I'm going to put this up towards the top, having equal distance on the top and the two sides. And the last thing I want to do is add some little uh, embellishments. These are the buttons galore and more. This is the C level collection. And these are the sparklets embellishments. And I'm using my Silhouette Pick Me Up tool to pick up these little gems. So I'm just going to grab three little gems here to put down in the lower left hand corner of my card just to add a little bit of sparkle here. And these have that pretty blue, light blue green color to them. 
So I've selected those three and I'm going to use my Gina K Connect Glue to attach those to my card. This is a nice strong glue and it will hold them down really well. So I'm just using the back of the tool just to press those in place. So I'll give you a closer look at this card. We have a lot of dimension here because we popped up the, the first layer and the second layer. And then we've got that pretty wood grain pattern that we created with that little mini ink pad. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.